When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to rent a video game. I remember seeing God Hand at Family Video with a $5.99 orange for sale sticker. And I remember thinking to myself, Ew, what the fuck is that cover? Tribal tattoos. Only Mario looks good with those. Then I probably rented like, Monster House on the PS2 or something. I wish at the time I could have seen past that terrible cover art and actually taken a look at the back of the box. Maybe I would have went home with God Hand that day and maybe I would have loved it. I'd like to think so. Though at the time I wasn't very into challenging games, I probably would have started it, died a few times, then decided the game wasn't for me. It doesn't help that the areas are barren, leaving much to be desired visually. I would have wrote it off as some cheap ass clunky beat em up, and I would have been right, except those things don't hold God Hand back in any way. Sometimes you start a game and it just clicks with you right off the bat. I mean, the screen warning you of violence is a dude being kicked in the nuts. If that doesn't scream goofy, I don't know what does. Gosh. The game follows Jean, a cucky simp boy willing to do anything for a girl he just met, all because she gave him a handy. A god handy. You see, a couple of guys who were acting no good started terrorizing y'all's neighborhood. Jean stepped in only to get his arm cut off. He is then given the titular god hand for his efforts. The story isn't much to write home about, and if I did, home probably wouldn't write back. Gene loses arm, gets god hand, bad guys want god hand, and shenanigans ensue. It's a character action game with all the character of a 7th grade play, made by 7th graders for 5th graders. The humor is what a child would find funny, and on top of that lacks a certain tactfulness with its depiction of some characters. This speaks more of the times, but the hyper flamboyant gay gay boys are presented in an unflattering way. Aww. But in saying that, I should point out that all the characters are presented in unflattering ways. They all have a basic characteristic that's turned up to 11, and then whatever little personality they have is fully formed off of it. I don't think it was intended to offend, but it may be offensive to some. I'm honestly not too sure who though, as it is so over the top and campy that you just can't help but laugh about it. Douchebags. I feel like the sentiment when it came to developing the game was go goof or go home. But that's neither here nor there, but what is here and there is the combat. 114 moves of varying effectiveness can be swapped in and out at your choosing. It's like Remember Me, if anyone remembers that. You can't just choose whatever looks cool or what has the highest damage output. You have to think of where each move goes in relation to what comes before and after it. If you start your combo with a granny smack, you're gonna have a bad time. Really, if you put granny smack in there at all, you're probably gonna have a bad time. What I find works best is to make your main square combo something quick and save your slower, stronger, and or juggle launch guard break attacks for specific button combos. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock and buy new moves that can then be equipped in the techniques menu. It's a nice way to reward the player and keep things fresh since the game is heavily focused on combat. This incentivizes players to try harder as some moves are unlocked by defeating demons, which randomly appear and are incredibly fast, aggressive dickheads. There's a leveling system in place, not a traditional leveling system, but something wholly unique to this game. It has an adaptive difficulty that's indicated visually to the player. The gauge in the lower left corner next to your health bar shows you what level you're at. So the better you're doing, the harder the game will get, with you going from black belt to bitch belt in no time at all. There's also a little radar in the upper right corner that shows you nearby enemies and projectiles. It's not that important in level 1, as most enemies make themselves apparent before attacking you. As you reach level 2, 3, and die, yes, die, you'll rely on it more and more as it becomes harder and harder not to get donkey punched. On the higher levels the enemies are faster, more aggressive, and prone to gang up on you. If you take enough damage, your level will lower. The leveling system may seem a little harsh, like it's a punishment for getting good, but it's not. It's like a reward. 
It has the player choose the difficulty as they play, based on what they can handle, rather than choosing from a preset list of difficulties. If it gets too hard, you can always waste a roulette move and grovel on the ground like a little bitch. I call it a waste because you're missing out on the butt clenching, tense as all hell fights. There's no feeling like white knuckling the controller, comboing and dodging for dear life. On top of that, there are so many better uses of your roulette moves. Busting balls and dragon kicking guys to go meet Team Rocket is extremely helpful and goes to show the true power of the god hand. As you pummel men and spank women, you'll gain meter juice. Once your meter is full, you can unleash the power of the god hand. Your attacks are faster and stronger. You're also invincible for a short time. You may think this would make the game too easy, but trust me, you will be begging for this meter to fill up. I mean, it's called attention meter for a reason. It's essentially rage mode from insert list of games with rage mode here. So it's definitely something you've encountered before. I'm mad, man. All of this adds up to an insanely fun fighting system, with Gene controlling rather well in combat. Not in combat, however, he controls like morning wood. I didn't ask for it to be this stiff, but I can deal with it. They compensate for this with wide, open, almost empty levels. The camera will clip through walls to make up for the lack of camera control. That cheap-assness I referred to before was actually a necessity and a design decision. I should have mentioned before that you dodge using the right stick. Up makes Gene bob and weave, and the other directions work exactly as you would expect them to. The dodging system adds to the frantic feel as you are rewarded with tension juice when dodging in someone's face. Pairing the joystick dodging with the fast-paced, combo-heavy juggle fest will make you enter a flow state that feels less like you're making love to the controller, and more like you're participating in BDSM. As your fingers form a knot around the controller, trying to keep you alive, that kinky feeling stays with you. <sighs> Here we go! There's a very brief moment of platforming in the game. I fell like five times. Honestly, it's kind of bad. Or maybe I just suck. But it's the only segment in the game with this. I'm not dogging on it for this either. God Hand never asks why. It asks why not. Why not have gambling and poison chihuahua racing? Why not have Power Rangers and a succubus for a boss fight? Why not have every cutscene culminate in goofy bullshit? Wait, you're not a human, are you? <laughs> and why not have a small, pointless section of platforming? Why the fuck not? The game doesn't take itself too seriously. I respect it for that, and for taking chances. Even if said chances and goofy bullshit don't always pan out. God Hand knows exactly what it is. And what it is definitely isn't a 3 out of 10. It's a tough-as-nails brawler that, when given 100% effort, reciprocates with 150%. It is an unstoppable force, and you must become the immovable object. You're not Alexander! I'm Alexander, he's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. God hand. God hand. It was directed by Shinji Mikami, who had just got done with Resident Evil 4. You can definitely tell he still had it on his mind when directing God hand. Don't worry, Ashley. I'm coming for you. Hold on, Olivia. I'm coming for you. You owe me the real thing, motherfucker. Produced with a small budget in only a year, it was a project that Mikami tailored solely to himself, with a one-for-them, one-for-me mentality. Unburdened with sales or critical reception, he sought out to make a game that he himself thought would be fun. It was published by Clover Studios, which existed to create unique and original games, not relying on sequels. Out of the six games they made, four were Beautiful Joe. That's kind of funny. <laughs> or sad, depending on how you look at it. It's hard to power creativity when the powers that be need money to power the power, and sequels sell better than new IPs do. Unfortunately, we never got a sequel to God Hand, with Clover parting ways with Capcom and becoming Platinum Games. Which is probably for the best. Clover Studios did, however, leave its own little mark with Beautiful Joe, Okami, and in recent years, God Hand, as people have started to recognize it for the classic it is. So, Clover, 
you made a great game. I really gotta hand it to you. (laughs) 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 Oh, fuck. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you. Dragon kick your ass into the Milky Way. Milky Way. Don't act like you don't like the Bulba Star. Bulba Star. My arm, my arm, my arm, my arm, my arm, my arm. The summon of the powers of the gas.